In this tutorial, we're going to be reviewing circuits and Ohm's law. Remember that in order to have an electric current, you got to have two things. The first thing that you need is a source of electric potential or voltage, which gives you charges energy. Typically, when we do labs, we use batteries as a source of electric potential. The second thing that we have to have is some sort of conductive path for the charges to move through. In our labs that we did in class, we typically used wires for that. So a current is simply the charge flowing through those wires, through any conductor. We use the symbol I for current, and the unit that we use to measure it is the ampere. An ampere is a coulomb per second. So a simple picture looks like this. Charges are moving through a wire. They're positive charges. So the current I would be to the right. And they go from an area of high voltage to an area of low voltage. High voltage would be like the positive end of the battery. Low voltage would be like the negative end of the battery. To figure out the amount of current that's flowing through a particular conductor, we're going to use Ohm's law. The amount of current depends on two things. First, the voltage. The more voltage you have, the bigger your current is going to be. So a 12-volt car battery can generate more current than a little 1-volt watch battery. The second factor is the resistance, basically what it's flowing through, how good of a conductor it is. The resistance has a symbol R, and the higher the resistance is, the lower your current is going to be. And so you combine those two into the equation V equals IR, which is what we typically refer to as Ohm's Law. Your resistors do two things. They lower the current, and they also dissipate electric energy as heat. So think about an electric stove or a toaster or an oven. Those are things that get hot because current is flowing through them. So those things are just resistors. The amount of heat that's flowing can be found from using the P equals IV or the P equals I squared R equation. That tells you the heat generated per second or the power. A longer resistor has a higher resistance. A wider resistor has a lower resistance. In the analogy we used in class was trying to drink a milkshake through a straw. The longer your straw is, the more difficult it would be to drink your milkshake. The wider your straw is, the easier it would be to drink your milkshake. So when you're looking at a test question and you're getting confused, think about straws and milkshakes. The easier it is to drink a milkshake through a straw will correspond to lower resistance. We had two different ways of connecting more than one resistor to a circuit. The first kind of circuit is called a series circuit. In a series circuit, the two resistors are part of the same branch of the circuit. That means that they have to have the same current flowing through them. So an example would look like this. If you said what one resistor could replace the two, you would be finding the equivalent resistance. And you find the equivalent resistance just by adding up your resistors. So in this case, the equivalent resistance would be 10 ohms. If the first resistor has a 4 ampere current flowing through it, that means that the second resistor has to have the same 4 ampere flowing through it as well. When circuits are in parallel, resistors are in parallel, that means that they're part of different branches of the circuit. They're not going to have the same current, but rather they'll have the same voltage. The rule for finding the equivalent resistance changes. Now we use a reciprocal rule, where 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, on and on and on and on. In other words, adding resistors in parallel makes the resistance go down. So an example would look like this. To find the equivalent resistance, you add up the reciprocals, which would give you something like 4 over 12, and then you invert that to get 12 over 4, which is 3 ohms. Notice that the equivalent resistance is lower than either of those two resistors, and that will always be true when they're in parallel. Your equivalent, resistor will be, is this, your equivalent resistance will be smaller.
Now again, they have different currents. So suppose the top one has a current of 6 amperes. The bottom one may have a current of 12 amperes. They'll have the same voltage, however. So if you were to do Ohm's law, you should get the same thing for both of them. There were two circuits we saw that had multiple resistors, like more than um, two. The first kind of looked like this. Label those light bulbs A, B, and C. And we should be able to look at that and tell that A is the brightest because it has the largest current going through it. All the current that goes through A gets split between B and C. So A is really bright, B and C are dim. You should also be able to look at that and tell me what happens if A is disconnected. You should be able to look at that and see that there, won't lo there will no longer be a complete circuit, so the other light bulbs would go out. The other resistors would be disconnected. The other circuit that we saw with three resistors looks something like this. And again, labeling those A, B, and C. You should be able to look at those and tell me that C is the brightest. It's independent of the other two and it has a lower equivalent resistance. So since the equivalent resistance between A and B is higher, then the current through them must be lower. So that might look something like that. You should also be able to tell me what happens if you were to disconnect one of those. For instance, if I disconnect light bulb C, what happens to the other two? Well, since light bulb C is in parallel with the other two, they're not going to be affected at all. They have independent currents. So that's the basic ideas that we need to know about electric circuits. As always, if you have questions or something I said doesn't make sense, please come in and see me. We'll get it straightened out.